welcome to the 8th week of RTC instruction for the first semester school year 2021-2022. I will be your instructor in, this, in the subject uh, standards of conduct of a soldier. I am Master Sergeant Gary Hamili and I am the tactical officer of Gulf Company. Welcome to the standards of conduct of a soldier. So this is our lesson for the eighth week of ROTC instruction. Like any other profession, the soldier has also its own set of conduct to follow. These standards of conduct dictates how the soldier works in his uh, environment, how he deals with other people, and how he sees uh, things around him. So these are the six standards of conduct of a soldier. So first we have the pursuit of excellence, pride in uniform, discipline, professionalism, adherence to law, and deference to authority. First we have the excellence or pursuit of excellence. So we say excellence is the quality of being extremely good. Not just good, extremely good. So, one has to work his way in order to be good, to be an expert in his field. So, a soldier powered by the pursuit of excellence is not readily seen. For the soldier, soldier operates in silence through, uh, though he carries the organization with him. So, anything that he does, it reflects the organization. It reflects the level of training and the discipline within the organization. There is a notion that when it's a military thing, it must be perfect. The armed forces or the armed services has always been considered to be the epitome of excellence. Probably, we were led to such thinking because of the military parades we have witnessed uh, where in soldiers move in the same direction at the one time together and smartly. So whatever they do, there is no margin of error. But these are just minute part of the greater whole. So in order to uh, achieve excellence, there must be a constant training. There must be an exposure to, to the job. There must be a learning that must continue uh, endlessly. To be excellent, soldiers must also have full knowledge of the job, proficiency in it. No, he knows how to, he knows his way to survive in jungle under extreme condition. When things go wrong, he knows how to fix them. He is not only proficient in combat, but in, keep, in peacekeeping as well. And this means he must be proficient in dealing with the elder, elderly and children in order to deliver the national development agenda. Excellence also means making, making the best using minimal resources, that includes time and effort. To produce greater results and, and to produce a greater result, that is what we call efficiency. More so, you are proficient if you can produce something out of the limited resources because you know where to find it. This is where proficiency comes to interplay with initiative and creativity to produce a result that may be beyond expectation. So there you have in a, uh, on the slide, it says there the third one, it is seen in the utmost efficiency and maximum use of soldier's ability with the prudent use of resources. So that is a mark of excellence. So in summation, the pursuit of excellence is not limited to the military service, but to all other endeavors. However, 
the criteria are almost the same all across disciplines. Greater understanding of your field of endeavor, producing greater products out of limited resources, showing mastery and skills in your field of work. Initiative is the drive or is the drive or the ways to make things happen. The creativity when you fit things into their proper perspective. So these are what these are the common things among disciplines in the pursuit of excellence. Okay. Next, we have uh, pride in uniform. So our slide here says the military uniform reflects one's pride in being the guardian of his country. The uniform is used as a representation of one's organization, his field of specialization. Wearing of uniform just like before the pandemic associates us with our school. So coming from the different school, I believe that you've been wearing your school uniform no? for, what's for, the, what, for what purpose primarily? Anyone? Please type in your answer in the chat box. So hence, whatever our school is known for, we are looked upon in the same manner. The uniform represents the organization itself. The uniform we wear has its own meaning as determined by the organization. So why do you have the color? Why do you have the cut? So the uniform speaks of the ideals of the organization. Also the nature of work. So that is why a soldier wears a long sleeve uniform because it serves also as protection. The pride in uniform demonstrates our pride in the organization or the institution we represent. The most honorable institution is the more, the more proud we are. The pride in uniform as a soldier is determined how we carry it. It projects what we believe in and the amount of strength we have through the way we wear it. And the pride we exemplify by the snappiness of the wearer. Therefore, when you begin to wear your ROTC uniform, or the CPU uniform for that matter, stand tall, keep a good posture, and wear it smartly. Um, I have a question here, and I want you to pause for a minute and uh, answer this in the chat box. So listen carefully. As a CPU cadet, what paraphernalia in your uniform shows that our CPU ROTC is among the best ROTC units in the country, if not the best? Okay. You find that out, huh? Find out if what that what is that paraphernalia that tells the world that the CPU cadet is among the best in the country? Okay? If you do not have the answer right now, you can answer that in the next instructions. But this one, the next question, I suppose you can answer this immediately. As a CPU student, how are you expected to wear your uniform? How are you expected to wear your uniform? Okay? So, one sentence is enough. Uh, give your answer in the chat box so that we will know you are with us today at this time. So let's proceed to the next, and that is discipline.
So di discipline the me uh, military parlance is the state of order and obedience existing within a command. Remember, it's a, it's a state of order and obedience. So you have your order and you are expected to obey them or to carry it out. Among all endeavors or discipline or field of discipline, I should say, discipline is best exemplified in the military service, be it in the army, navy, or air force. Discipline follows a particular chain of command. We coordinate when we give instructions. I cannot simply give instruction to Alpha Company or to any other company. I have to go through the tactical officer of those companies and discipline carries it with it respect. So out of respect, I have to ask permission from the tactical officers of those companies. So soldiers are expected to follow legal orders from their superiors without hesitation. Take note, legal orders. But the interpretation of legal orders does not depend on the individual's interpretation. But it is interpreted according to the will of the commander. However, if there is a gross there is a gross violation of existing orders, then it is only then that such order may be challenged. Now these lawful orders should be followed decisively with excellence, initiative, which is a derivative of discipline, and enthusiastically. When things ter turns out not as expected, it is, a, it is an automatic response for a soldier to exercise his initiative as to accomplish the mission excellently. So we cannot, we cannot uh, discount the possibility still of a pursuit of excellence that is uh, uh, supported by discipline. Okay, next one, we have professionalism. So, professionalism in the military career stands for commitment, knowledge, skills, and is better expressed in one's attention to duty with required discipline and competence. So, may I invite your attention still that professionalism is anchored on discipline and competence. So it says, I further says there that professionalism comes from the soldier's pursuit of excellence. So a while ago we mentioned excellence, that in excellence we carry out the best, the best way to do the job with the best result. In the military service, professionalism is defined, no? as we have said, by commitment, knowledge, skills, and expressed in one's devotion to duty. With discipline and competence, they were able to do the minimum, at least no, they were able to do the job with the minimum requirement. Professionalism does not require a level of education. You do not need to be, in order to be professional in your dealings, you don't need to be a doctor, a master's degree holder, but it is dictated more by common sense. In other words, you use the most common of all senses, okay? a, or a combination of senses. And may I remind you, or I hope, you have heard your parents or grandparents telling you, 
mas maayo pa ang wala in eskwelahan pero may pinanilagan. Okay? So, others can deliver the, the level, no? the, the level of being professional in their dealings because they are attentive to details. Now, these are demonstrated in the values on the job with colleagues and other people. So, that's how professionalism uh, 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 is shown. And uh, I believe in, uh, a while ago, in order to be considered professional, there are certain standards you have to meet. So, in the core uh, values, it was, said, it was uh, mentioned there that you should have the standard of morals, the standard of uh, the standard of morals, the standard of uh, uh, loyalty. What else? The standard of merits. Okay. How many of those? How many of those? Okay. Type it now in the chat box. We'll see if you have, if you remember them. Okay. So I done. So your respective instructor will, uh, instructor will see the, your answer there. Now, being professional, you are expected to demonstrate values which best shows the state of organization. So being professional, there must be a harmonious working relationship among the members of the organization. And they are producing good results. Okay. Um, so, previous slide. So, it's in the last slide, we have here, it says here that professionalism in soldier gives rise to impartiality. So, you must be uh, balanced and you do not support anyone just because they're friends, but you stand on what is right. So it stresses reliance on competence and ability rather than personality. So I'll give emphasis to this last uh, slide, which says professionalism and uniformity in the military does not breed anonymity that allows soldiers to get lost in the crowd. It enables the soldier to gain, still gain or uh, to maintain his individuality among the crowd. But instead, foster the correct perception of uniqueness. There you go. Perception of uniqueness, his individuality, no? in order to achieve his mission. Okay? Now let's proceed to the next one. So, adherence to law. When we say adherence to law, it is we follow the law in simple terms. So the armed forces is an organization, is a big organization indeed, and, it's, it, and it is defined by many personalities. That is why there should be a law. There should be rules. And these rules or law guide each and every member of the organization about his conduct, about his standards of conduct, as he uh, discharges his duties, as he, uh, as he does his job, and also dealing with other members of the organization. So, or also we have, as example of law, we have the Constitution, the Articles of War, uh, the Ethical Standards, and Public Accountability. How about here in CPU? What laws do we have? So, primarily we have the rules and the school rules and regulation that regulates the conduct of students in this university. So next, we have the 
uh, differ, uh, difference to authority. So authority represents those with the right and responsibility to carry out functions that affect the entire group. So this authority, it gives them, it gives them the permission, it gives them the responsibility to carry out anything for the good of the group. So persons in position of authority within the military are entrusted with carrying out military operational imperative and discipline ensures this is followed. So if you are if you are a person with authority, then you are also responsible. If you have the authority, you have also the responsibility. And uh, as members of the military organization, it is our responsibility, also our responsibility as subordinates to follow our superiors. When we enter the joint or when we join the organization, either in your capacity as students, the moment you have entered the organization, you have already pledged your support to follow the rules and regulation either at the school and at this point when you join ROTC, you are bound you know, to follow the rules and regulation of the ROTC. And later, in the greater picture, when you join the armed services, when you become a member of the Philippine Army, then you are also expected to follow the rules and regulation of the uh, Philippine Army as directed by people in authority. So military authority is inherent in its position as well as earth. It is recognition of a soldier's right to command within his level of military organization. So if you are a squad leader, then you have a certain, you are given a certain range of authority. If you are a platoon leader, you, are, you have also your own range of authority. So it's just that you are there and given the position, but without authority, you cannot carry out the, the job or the expectations of that the particular position. Also, when you are given a particular task, you should be given the corresponding authority. Otherwise, you cannot achieve the task or you cannot complete the task because People will start questioning your authority. So when you do not have the, the authority, you cannot uh, move people. You cannot ask people to do things for you. But when, the author when there is an authority, then you can move heaven and earth in order to achieve your mission. Okay, next slide. So difference to civil authority is likewise required of the soldier as a function of his responsibility. For it is his response that can either influence the outcome of a critical situation, even determine the stability of an authority in power. So we took this uh, particular uh, idea on the on the premise that civilian authority is uh, superior than that of the military because the civilian authority is the ones elected by the people. So that is why when we are, when the, the president is civilian in nature but he is still the commander in chief of the armed forces of the Philippines. So all all uh, orders coming from the president are immediately uh, complied by the military establishment. So, it, in uh, in this uh, in this phrase uh, that it can influence the outcome of critical situation. This is or the ESA reproduction is the example of this particular uh, uh, segment. No? The outcome of critical situation. There, when, uh, when uh, the, the, 
chief of or the chief of staff. No, na, not the chief of staff, rather, but the uh, secretary of defense of the uh, uh, defense department sided with the with the other group, no, or seceded from the president. Then it turned it turned the the situation in favor of the uh, people power that uh, restored the democracy and uh, sent the president, the former president Marcos, to Hawaii. So it is very important uh, for the military to always observe or follow the authority within the chain of command. So again, uh, let's let's review the standards of conduct of uh, a soldier. Type them in the chat box before we finally end our uh, discussion. So these st standards of conduct of a soldier, as it's a uh, as established by the military uh, leadership will help the soldier or will guide the soldier find his way as he goes through his work in the military establishment. Not only that, but it serves it serves as a guide to everybody, not the soldier, not the mere soldier, but also to the power and authority or to the unit commanders so that they can work harmoniously within the organization and thereby uh, strengthening the esprit de corps and working towards the common goal. So I hope that this will enlighten you as a member of the CPU RTC and hopefully to be in the armed services in the future. So thank you very much for your time and I hope you have complied with and answered our questions through the chat box before we finally end this presentation. So, thank you very much and have a nice day ahead.